Binding? Binding? What's the difference? Don't worry. Go get your favorite pack of Doritos. I've got you. <laughs> in this video, we're going to discuss and look at the difference between the two and also break down in what scenarios you want to use each one. Put in this observation framework course that's free on my channel and if you're interested in you know seeing all the videos or downloading the source code feel free to check out the links down below let's get this money so we look at our code here and our project you'll see it's just a button to subscribe and it increments account or likewise a like and dislike now a lot of this code is covered in the intro to the observation framework on my channel which is part of this playlist that you can access down below and if you want to access this code as well it's also down below in the link which is covered you know in my gum roll you can access the code there so if you work with the swift ui data flow before you would actually realize we had something called a binding and the best way to think about a binding is a way for us to read and write to some kind of state now some examples of this previously were state state object observe object and environment objects as well and if any of these properties we can also write and read to them by using a binding now by default some switch wire views actually do have a binding and you might see examples of this with either a text field or a secure text field or text fields and whatnot these are examples of how you can bind two properties now starting with ios 17 some things have changed and one of the main things that's changed is that we now have a bindable property wrapper and you might be wondering what is that well in this project I've already added an observable object here using the macro and the best way to think about a bindable uh, property wrapper is it allows you to basically pass down objects marked with the observable macro to your children so you can either create, by, create a binding from it or read and write from those properties. Now make sure you stick around because we're going to be looking at, that, at some code examples of where bindable and binding is used in this project and you can actually apply that same you know use cases and projects to yours as well and if you're enjoying this video I'd love to hear it in the comment section below and also as well share the video with people like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know when i release a brand new video now another thing as well is like i said before if you want to access any of the source code within this course you can do that in the links down below that take you to my gumroad page so if you just look at our view here you'll see that i've created an instance of our source of truth which is our youtube overview manager and I actually passed this manager directly into the overview view. So we just click into this overview view. You'll notice that I'm using the bindable uh, property wrapper here. And the reason being is because within this view, we actually do read some of the properties from our model and also as well, modify it as well. And you'll see an example of us modifying it within this button here, which is our subscribers button. So if I tap on this button, you'll see that it starts to increment the actual number of subscribers that I have on my channel. Now, another thing to note as well is that I can actually read the properties and reading the properties from this bindable property wrapper actually causes the view to also refresh as well. So we get a redraw. So you can see that by passing down the whole source of truth down to this child view, I can read and write to it. So that's when you'd want to use bindable. We need to read and write from an object that is marked with the at observable macro. But if you scroll down a bit, You'll see that I actually have this view here called the YouTube engagement view. And what this is, is the likes and dislikes here. Now, one thing to note here is that I'm not actually directly using the bindable, you know, property wrapper. And the reason why is because when I'm working with SwiftUI views, a good habit that I like to do is only give the view what it needs. Now, in this case, all it needs is the likes and the dislikes. It doesn't need anything else like the subscribers. So if I click into here, you'll see that I've got a binding and the reason why I have a binding is because I only want to change these two properties within my model. So I don't need the entire object. So instead I just pass in what it needs. So by creating a binding, I can now modify the likes and the dislikes and read and write to those properties. So just quickly going back, you'll see that with our bindable objects, we can actually convert them and access we can actually convert our properties to a binding as well which is pretty nice so you get a bit of flexibility so in my honest opinion the way i work specifically you don't have to do the same thing you can pass in the whole bindable you know whole objects and use bindable if you want to but i prefer to create a separation of concerns and only give the view 
what it cares about, which is why I have a binding. So the general rule of thumb and the difference between the two, in my opinion, is with a bindable, you want to use this when you have a view that needs access to the properties in an object marked with the observable macro and binding, you want to use this when you have some kind of state that you need access to so you can read and write to it. They're the rules that I would follow. Now, I hope you found this useful because in the next video, we're actually going to look at how we can build our own custom language switcher by working with user defaults and seeing how that works with the observation framework. So you should see the next video on the screen here. So you want to click on that so we can actually continue on within this course. Let's get this money.